What's going on guys, Tyler here, and today we are talking all about Elementor 3.0 Beta. This is the big one. I'm gonna show you how 3.0 is running on my website. It is super exciting. I'm gonna go over everything I've learned, my thoughts, what I, what my take is on using this, and uh, if it's worth it, honestly, because I think it's a really interesting you know, change to the, the whole backbone of Elementor, but I think it's gonna be really nice, and I think it's going to help the process of designing multiple web pages just flow a lot better. So it's super exciting. The 3.0 beta is out right now. Um, it's available for all beta testers, which I am a beta tester. And the 3.0 full version, like the public version, will be is set to be released in August of 2020. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it and take a look at 3.0. If you haven't joined the fam already, be sure and smash that nice red look and subscribe button. You can get notified of videos just like this all about Elementor, as well as as we get closer to the release of Elementor 3.0 public, I may have more updates for you. So be sure and hit that nice red look and subscribe button. And last but not least, if you haven't joined Elementor Pro yet, if you haven't upgraded, be sure and check out the link down below in the description. See what kind of price you can get for that. Honestly, this plugin has just like up the design and style and just up everything like the whole presentation of my website is just increased it and made it so much nicer and so much cooler and so much more modern so I highly highly recommend it be sure and check out that link if you want to upgrade with no further ado let's jump into Elementor 3.0 beta so the first things first, the first thing that I noticed and that I was actually looking for because I had seen it in the email and kind of their demo preview images of what it's like is dragging in a headline. You just drag and drop it right there. And then under the style tab is where the majority of the changes are going to be made. All right, now you see the style tab has pretty much changed. It's had a makeover. The text color is set to primary now, which we didn't have any kind of drop down menu or anything like that. We only had the main editor of where you made all the adjustments to the text. And the typography is now set to primary header, which again, we didn't have that option. Um, text head or text shadow is pretty much stayed the same. The blend mode, I'm not sure if that was in that exact spot. I don't use this blend mode very often, but you do have this option if you want right there. So it's very basic, it's it's cleaned up quite a bit. It, it looks very, you know, simplistic. All right, so let's just jump into the text color here. And as we click this drop down, you can see that it now comes up with different preset colors that we have selected. So these are called global colors. And these are colors that we've gone ahead and set beforehand. And we can just simply select the different colors right from here. So the idea is that you keep in in accordance and really just kind of in the same style all throughout your pages. So if your brand colors are, you know, blue, green, and red, which probably not the hottest brand colors, but if they're blue, green, and red, you want to stick with that kind of all the way through your website. So if your, you know, your primary color is blue, your titles are blue, you want your titles to be blue all across your website. And it just kind of gives a very cohesive flow to your website as people are going page to page. So as you can see, I actually have set my colors here and I didn't actually set these. These were colors imported from, I believe they were called default colors before. I have a video previously talking about that in Elementor 2, 2.0. Oh, or 2.10 or something like that um, but it actually talks about default colors and how you set those and um, basically they're just like colors that you want to use often and that it defaults to but now these are global colors meaning they will actually change the color of each spot on the site all throughout your website when you make any kind of adjustments to these so now you have two ways to make adjustments you can make adjustments to the global colors and how you would do that is you would come down to manage global colors and it will load up a new menu you see here and we're now under global settings so these are global colors right here what we would do is go ahead and click the primary and go ahead and select our color we can put in an html hex code right there and um, if we wanna rename anything, we can go ahead and rename it right here. But basically we're setting up our settings right here. So once we have those all set up like we want, um, as well, you can also delete them here. If you hover over the color here and then just hover over to the trash can, you can click that and click delete. And it will say that just making you aware that you are deleting a global color. So all of the instances will inherit their value from an unknown source, meaning it's going to just kind of default back to what it, it 
its standard default is. So if you do delete a color and it's used all throughout your site, just be aware of that, that it is going to lose those properties. So um, if we need to add a color, we can certainly do that. We can just say add a color. We can name it new item number five right there. We can go ahead and name it, pick our color, and then we are good to go. But let's go ahead and just delete that one for now. So let's go back here and uh, go back to editing our, I'm still trying to figure out how they want us to navigate all of this and stuff. but. Basically, we're back here on our page. So let's go ahead and hit edit again. Now, the same thing, we can adjust it right here if we need to. So let's say, yes, we wanna follow this pattern throughout our whole website, but say this is like one unique spot that we just need a different color. So we can go ahead and just adjust it right here by clicking here and selecting our color just as we would normally. So there we go, we've made one single adjustment. This has not affected any global colors or any other colors. Um, any other areas on our website that are pulling from go from the global color settings. So we basically have just made a single adjustment here. So let's go ahead. The same, pretty much the same exact thing happens for typography. Um, we have our primary header headline, our secondary headline, body text, accent text. For some reason, I think this is just the 3.0 beta kind of glitch. Um, they're super like a light gray is super hard to read, but basically it says primary headline, secondary headline, body text, accent text, and uh, these are the global typography settings. I'm assuming that will be fixed in the public version. Let's go ahead and just jump into manage global typographies here, and I'll show you what this looks like. Now this is a little bit more intricate just because global typographies don't have just a simple single setting like colors do. A color, you just pick the color. In typographies, you gotta pick the font, the spacing, the uh, weight, the line height. There's just so many different settings. But it is super nice, it follows the same exact pattern. You just hover over and you can trash things just like this. You can't trash primary, secondary, body text, and accent it looks like, but you can go ahead and add styles and then trash them just like that. Um, it, it just makes this all, again, just cohesive and universal. So let's go ahead and hit edit primary headline. Now, by default, this is something you want to note, is you can go ahead and select your font right here. If you don't set a size, it will default to whatever the, the standard size is for that element. So, for example, when I drag in a title, it defaults to this size. When I drag in, you know, maybe a body text, it'll default to a smaller text size. Um, if you want to set a title that is, uh, you know, the same exact, or I'm sorry, if you want to set a size that is the same exact size across your entire website, you can do that, but you just have to remember that it's going to be that size wherever you drag in a, a title just like that. So if we set it to 57 here, you can see any time now that I go ahead and drag in a new title, it will be the 57 size font. So that's a two-edged sword. It's it's helpful because you can go ahead and do that, but it is kind of also, you gotta kind of account to where maybe size is kind of limited and you can't fit a whole title in there or a large title. So just kind of keep, be aware of that. But for the most part, I think it's gonna work really well. So um, on the desktop also, you can go ahead and click that and switch to mobile and you have the ability to set different sizes here. So again, these are global settings. So anywhere you put this title in, it will default to 27 in a mobile size and it will default to 57 in a desktop size. And honestly, it's, it's super nice. They've made this super, super fluid and just super easy. So I am not going to set a size yet. I'm just not sure everything, you know, I want to see kind of where it affects different places and stuff like that. And I'll need to go through and kind of kind of take out customizations. I've like individual customizations I've made to different titles and things like that. So I can go ahead and have them default back to the global settings, which would make my website a lot more just cohesive and fluid like that. So Basically, we can go ahead and set any of our settings here, the font, the size, the weight, the transform. If you want an uppercase, I default mine to uppercase. Um, if you want the style, normal, italic, uh, oblique, uh, decoration, like underline or a line through it, the line height, letter spacing, the, the typical style settings that you're used to, but we can go ahead and do that for the uh, headline, the secondary headline, any of our global settings here. So. Those are the biggest changes to Elementor 3.0 are these global settings. I feel like they kind of kind of had them in place, but nobody really used them. It was not this easy. 
it wasn't it didn't really make sense how it was used and so this just really allows people to kind of just okay i'm going to set a setting here and then if i want to call to that setting whenever i drag in a new element i can just click this drop down and select that you know primary headline setting and it'll bring all those properties right to it so that's super nice super fluid i think people are really going to like it so let's go ahead and just show you here if you do need to make individual adjustments it is possible and um, I saw that I, it, when you're making individual adjustments, it might kind of bring some kind of weird dynamic to the site that some of your things are a little bit changed or a little bit altered than the other things. That the idea is just to be, uh, you know, repetitious for each site or each page. You just want, you know, consistency and and fluidity of your brand and style. So, um, but you can if you need to. You hit the edit button here. You just hit this edit right here, and you can go ahead and make any kind of change. And you notice when I hit this edit button, or I'm sorry, I hit this edit button right here, it changes now this typography now to a custom. So. So if I want to go back to primary headline, I can do that right there. If I want to switch these colors back to an accent color, I can do that right there. But if I need to make any kind of adjustment, I go ahead and click on it and it changes it to a custom um, text color and then I hit this and as soon as I make a change in here, it will change it to a custom. Oh, it is not changing it to a custom. It should be. That's another Elementor 3.0 beta glitch, but um, you can go ahead and make that adjustment in here. So um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. It's not actually changing. Hmm. This is why they call it a beta version. Got to work out these little kinks. So if we go up here to style and we hit the edit, there we go. Now it switches to custom. All I did was refresh my page. Um, I don't know what happened, but now we can go ahead and set individual styles um, if we want it, you know, super thick or something like that, or we want it super thin maybe, and we need to transform it to, you know, lowercase. We can go ahead and do that, and that's going to affect just this individual element right there. So, and it changes right here to typography custom, and we can go ahead and just switch that back if we need to, and it switches back to the default global style settings. So yeah, guys, this is Elementor 3.0. I think it's gonna bring a lot of fluidity to your website and make your just your style and your design, you know, cohesive and consistent across all of your pages. And if you are just barely starting out with Elementor, you have a advantage because you've not set up anything in, you know, previously. What I would do before you even start, or if you maybe are designing Elementor websites for someone else and you're you're about to start a new website, what I would do if if you can do this beforehand is I would go into your menu here when you're in your normal elementor options here um, hit your menu and go to global settings and then go to colors and typography i would do this first thing absolutely first thing go ahead and set your primary brand colors i would maybe just drag a few elements on the page you know maybe a title a, a subheading uh you know some body text and a little bit of accent text or just something like that so you can kind of see what it looks like and have the client decide or you pick and and make it look very uniform and what they want to see so if you do that then you don't have to worry about going and changing all of the settings off you know other text bodies after you've done that or going back to global settings and making sure it's changing everything if you just do it up front it's way easier um, same thing goes for global typography go through choose some fonts that they like the fonts that they want um, and and what style they like and set it all up here and then after that it's a matter of just you know plugging in data you just drag in the element select the correct you know style for it out of that drop down and then just plug in the data you know whatever they need to say the the content they want on it um, one thing I did actually show this in a previous video if you haven't seen that other video I talk all about you know style stylization and I don't know it's like fonts and all the color brand colors and everything like that I talked all about that in another video when I was using default colors so the old version of what global settings is now um, if you want to see that video go ahead and find the card up there but let's go over here to this website it is called reliablepsd.com and basically what I looked up this is 
called the Ultimate Google Font Pairings. Um, it's the ultimate collection of Google Font Pairings displayed beautifully with classic art. Uh, and so it's from this website, Reliable PSD. PSD stands for Photoshop File. Um, but basically it just gives you lists and lists of fonts that go well together. So this right here is Roboto Condensed Bold plus Cabin Regular. So if you like that style right there, you can go ahead and use these type of Google fonts. Um, Railway Light with Open Sans Regular. That's kind of the, uh, I think that's the style that I'm using on my website. Um, the Playfair Display Bold Italic with the Source Sans Regular. Anyway, there's just options and options and options of what they suggest go well together. And so it's kind of cool because you can kind of see this different kind of style and, and show it to your clients or show it. You can look at it yourself and see, you know, oh, I really like this. I don't like this. Maybe you even combine two of these different ones together. But it gives you, it's a good place to start and gives you some options. So what I would do is go ahead and set maybe like your header and your, and maybe like your uh, subtitle your titles and your subtitles to this font and then set your body text to maybe the second font um, something like that will give you a good option to kind of start with so anyway that's there if you like it and I think all of these Google fonts should be in Elementor already or just about all of them so I've had pretty good success finding most of them so yeah hopefully that helps you guys and uh that about wraps it up for Elementor 3.0. Like I said, the beta version is out now for beta testers. If you want to go ahead and update and upgrade to that, you can do that. I think you may have to be a pro user, but you can definitely do that. And then also the full version comes out publicly, like I said, in August 2020. That's their estimated timeline right now. So if you're interested in Elementor Pro at any time, be sure and check out the link down below in the description and upgrade. It's a really reasonable price and it is just an incredible plugin. You can do all kinds of cool stuff um, you thought this was cool elementor pro can do way more cool stuff so be sure and check that out and if you haven't already be sure and smash that nice red look and subscribe button join the fam be notified of videos just like this on um, my upcoming schedule of videos and uh, you'll see some awesome stuff all about elementor and just entrepreneurship and all that good stuff in general so thank you guys so much for watching have an amazing day and we will see you guys next time later